Hi friend, my name is Maggie Castoni. Today we get to talk about something amazing, and that is God's story. God's story is unlike any story you have ever heard. God's story is one of creation, redemption, and restoration. And something that is so exciting about God's story is that we get to be a part of it. We are a part of it. But you might be wondering, how? That is what we are going to be talking about today. How a book, the Bible, was written a thousand years ago, and it still can apply to our life today. Let's dive in. The first question you might be asking is, what is the Bible? Why is the Bible the foundation of the Christian faith? The Bible is made up of 66 different books that all come together to tell one story, God's story. The Bible was written by eyewitnesses who walked beside Jesus, who were prophets or messengers of God, and people who heard God speak audibly. 2 Timothy 3.16 talks about how scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Any great story has to begin somewhere and God's story starts in the beginning, right when creation happened. Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. After everything was created, the sun, the moon, the animals, the ocean, there was still something missing and that was man. The creation of man was special in the sense that we were made in God's image. We were made to be in relationship with him. Think about that. God created us in his image to be in relationship with him. How cool is that? The man that God created was named Adam, and God graciously gave Adam a wife named Eve. God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was perfect. There was everything that you could have ever needed there. God walked with them in the evening and had conversations with them face to face. God told them that they could eat from any tree in the whole garden except the one and that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now this is where sin enters the story. Satan disguised himself as a snake and tempted Eve to eat of the tree. Eve ate it and gave some to Adam. After they ate the fruit, darkness filled the earth and God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden because God cannot dwell amongst unholy people and Adam and Eve were now unholy. However, God still loved them and wanted to be in relationship with them. So God promised that a descendant of Adam and Eve would come and crush the head of the snake, defeating sin and death and leading to God's ultimate victory. Even in a broken and sinful world, God is still working to redeem his kingdom and his people. Fast forward in time, multiple generations later, there was a man named Abraham. In Genesis 12, 1, God calls Abraham to leave his country, his family, his people, and to go to the land that God is calling him to go to. God makes a promise to Abraham that says, I will make you into a great nation and your descendants will be as numerous as the stars. I will bless you and make your name great. God is reminding Abraham of the promise that he made to Eve. There will be a savior and we will all live in harmony with him one day. Now we meet a man named David. David was a man after God's own heart. David was a true man of God and an amazing king. However, even David sinned. God reminded David of his promise to Eve once again and told him that an even greater king was coming, one that would save the world from sin. As time goes on and more generations pass, the promise that God has made still hasn't come to light and people are beginning to doubt and wonder. So God brings his people to the promised land. In this land, his people can dwell in harmony and he will bless them as long as they obey God and his law. In the meantime, God sends prophets who are messengers of God's word. They remind the people of Israel of God's promise of a savior and the good news of the full kingdom that was to come. The prophets tell of the Messiah who's coming by proclaiming God's word to others, by enforcing God's law and reminding the people what would happen if they didn't obey God and writing down prophecy in order for it to be preserved and written in the Bible. Now we're at the point in the story where we see the promises of the savior becoming fulfilled. 
In Matthew 1, 1, it says, this is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Just like God had promised, the savior of the world came through the lineage of David and Abraham. Jesus was born to a virgin woman named Mary. An angel appeared before Joseph, whom Mary was not married to yet, and said to bring Mary home as his wife because she has conceived a baby through the Holy Spirit. Then they were to name their son Jesus. This is actually why we celebrate Christmas. Christmas is when Jesus Christ, the savior of our world, was born. Throughout Jesus' life, we see that he was fully God and fully man. He was fully man because he grew up from a baby to an adult. His mother Mary took care of him. He ate, he slept, he played, he walked and talked just like us. But we also see that he was fully God, which meant he never sinned. He was and will forever be the only person to ever walk this earth who will never sin. Jesus' life and ministry was shown to be miraculous. Throughout Jesus' life here on earth, he healed people of disease. He drove demons out of people. He walked on water. He rose people from the dead. He had power over everything. He also had the power to forgive people of their sins and ultimately change their life for the better. Jesus also taught people about God's word and preached to them, telling people that he was the Messiah and the Son of God. Jesus also had 12 disciples. His disciples helped him spread the word of God. As you can imagine, this didn't go over well with the religious leaders and the kings of that time. Eventually, Jesus was accused of blasphemy and he was crucified, which means they thought Jesus was lying about being the son of God and they punished him by death. Jesus took our place on the cross and died for us because he knew we could not live a perfect and obedient life to God. God sent Jesus, his one and only son, to die for us so that we may be saved from our sins and live an eternal life with God in heaven. But Jesus did not stay in the tomb. He rose from the dead three days later. And this is why we celebrate Easter. Jesus has defeated sin and death once and for all and God's promise has been fulfilled and the snake's head has been crushed. After Jesus was resurrected, he told his disciples that he was sending the Holy Spirit in his place. Jesus told his disciples that they will be his witnesses and they are to go into the world and preach. After he said this, he ascended into heaven. However, two men appeared before the disciples and said, do not worry for Jesus will one day return the same way that he had left us. Acts 2 tells us the story of how the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus' disciples. It talks about how the Spirit of God was poured onto all of his people. Christian believers have been given the Holy Spirit to help us spread the gospel to all nations. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins and points us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes to the truth and enables us to put our trust in Jesus. Our mission as Christians is the same mission that Jesus gave his disciples. We are to go into the world and preach the gospel. Jesus did not command only a few people to do this. He commanded all of us to. All those who believe in Jesus are considered to be the church. The temple of God is both in us and in our community. The temple of God is in our bodies because the Holy Spirit is in us and in our Christian community because Jesus is our cornerstone. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are saved. We are not saved through works, we are saved through faith alone. Even though we are saved through Jesus, we still live in a fallen world and our salvation is not yet complete. Salvation is not yet complete. Jesus is going to return to earth again. This time, all those who believe in him will be going to heaven right beside him. Heaven is where the promise will be completely fulfilled. We will be living with God in perfect harmony. He will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more sickness, no more sadness, no more pain. This is where the story of God comes full circle. The promises that God made in the very beginning with Adam and Eve and Abraham and David still hold true today. We are a part of God's story. And although we live in a world with heartache, sickness, and death, God promises that one day this life will be behind us and we can live in perfect harmony with him. All you have to do is believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and you have to accept him into your heart as your savior. I pray that you know how deeply loved you are and how much God cares for you. Thank you.